One of the things that I think is really unique about this is that they've been operating out of this building for over 50 years. And I'm not sure of it, but I would bet that this is the only station that has this kind of story still operating in the United States. I'm sure there were many of them in their time, but not that still operate today. It started out as just WVAL, the station they put on in 1963, but it's evolved into Tri-County Broadcasting, where there's five stations that operate out of this building now. You can get a little idea of the five stations and uh, their personalities through the stickers. Okay, Herb, we're going to kind of take it from the beginning. And okay. so far as I know, the beginning was 1959. What were you doing in 1959, and why did you think, maybe I'll start a radio station? Well, I was uh, doing television work in Sauk Rapids here, radio, television radio work. I worked for a Nearing Garden. And I started to work there in 55. And there was a guy come through several times. He stopped, a guy by the name of Chuck Niles. And he was in a, we talked to him a lot of times, and all of a sudden, why don't you start, you guys start a radio station? Well, Carl and I talked it over, so Carl says, well, why not? So we went and went ahead with Chuck and sent the application in, but before the application, we had to uh, see such a thing as getting the, getting the ground, where you're going to build a station, and we were going to build in the Sauk Rapids, and we and I was happened to be lucky enough to get this property, 19 acres. Now from the family perspective, Val, how many children do you have at that time? At that time we had uh, five. Oh, already five? It was a microphone. Yep. And you can like tilt it back like that. Yeah, there we go. That's probably a good angle. Well, I guess we had four. One was born just at the time before we put it on the air. Five. Yeah, we had five. So it seems like that's kind of a big family risk with five children to change from the Herb's established profession and start a brand new thing. How'd you feel about that? Well, I, <laughs> I guess I just went along with it. I was working as an RN at that time, okay. nights. So, uh, and then I had things. So we had income from that. Okay. All right. All right. You had that one steady income stream yep. coming in. Uh, but, uh, okay, that makes it even in another way more complicated. You're working, and you have five children, and he's starting a brand new business. Yeah, that is a lot complicated. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I was determined, because it was bullhead, I wouldn't say no for an answer, because I know I had the fam family behind me, and of all this whole thing, Val and I had made up our mind, we're going to do it on our own, and nobody's money getting stuck in. Let me ask you this. It's odd, it's unusual, especially today, for a radio station to be in a house, you know, and the nickname of this place that I really like is the Red House That Rocks. Why is the radio station in a house? Well, if you build it like a radio station, it can be a house if you have the rooms set up right. And I said, hey, we're going to build a house and then we're going to make a radio station out of it. Because if it wouldn't happen, we got something to sell. Yeah. And we took our production room board and we somehow wheel it out of the building, put it into the car, and then we'd set up a studio on site, wherever we needed to do. And, and you would even have like turntables and stuff. You would oh, turn yeah. tables so from Everything there. was done there. Everything was sent by Marty. And the announcer in those days had to uh, entertain the people, had to keep the client happy, and it was, uh, it was a monumental task. And this, I mean, think about it in those old days. You had records that were two and a half minutes long, and then you had to talk, and then you had to play your commercial sets. So, you know, you had to fire every one of those and have the brakes tight, and then you are performing like a circus monkey, you know? So and sometimes they were monkeys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there are four stations. Four stations. Four or five that run out of this, these, uh, this equipment. How many active transmitters? Uh, was it two per station? We got eight, eight, eight okay. transmitters out here. But you have uh, WVAL here, and then you have 660 here. Okay. And then when you go down at this end, we built uh, 1010 next, and then we built 540 last year. And we, this was all planned, and this took over maybe about a, a five to ten year period. Come on, climb aboard, hang on. 
See, all this is where the ground plate sits. Uh -huh. All this has copper underneath it. Get copper. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Pretty far down there. Yeah, it's pretty far, and it's and there's no way that. Well, yeah, you could probably come in here, but if you're not going to, uh, in a very short time, there's going to be someone out here. Yeah. Okay. I had to walk all the way to the mud back. See here. But as a, as a duck hunter, you're kind of used to that. Right? Oh yeah. Now, see, you see, those are the screw and anchors. Those are the piers that it sits on. It's a uh, very small footprint. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. And, and these coils here are, are uh, frequency specific. Some of them are allowing the signal to pass, and some of them are impeding the, the signal. And that's how come you have all these different components out here. Every station is interconnected and intertwined, and that's what makes it so magical. See, now you can really hear them talk. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like a radio's on. Yeah. There's no radio. Yeah. That's just the, that's all the coil tuning. singing. It's almost like yeah. we're inside a radio. Well, actually, you are inside a radio. <laughs> That's radio. Yeah. That's radio. Are we done? I think we're done. I think we're done. Okay. Thank you.